Welcome to our video webinar series. Today we're going to be talking about culti uh, cultivated cordyceps. So cordyceps is one of the most prized items in Chinese medicine, but it's become almost unusable in the modern day due to the extreme price of the raw material. Cordyceps is a fungus that parasitizes a, a caterpillar in the high mountain the high mountains of Tibet, uh, into Nepal, into Yunnan, into Qinghai, uh, and Sichuan. Um, but the, the natural population of cordyceps has been in dramatic decline, and the global demand for cordyceps has been rising steadily, with increased media attention, increased awareness of Chinese medicine as a whole, and increased awareness of the immune system functions of the immune system benefits of cordyceps. So there's been a huge rise in its popularity which has caused a huge rise in, rise in its price. And right now, as of just a couple weeks ago, the cost of the wholesale raw material in China was about 60,000 renminbi per kilogram for just the lowest grade, smallest wild product. And then going up to 80,000 per kilo for the next higher grade, going up to well over 100,000 renminbi per kilo, which is about, um, <clears throat> you're getting into anywhere from starting at about 10,000 US dollars per kilo going up to 15, even 20,000 US dollars per kilo. So for an item where the traditional dose is going to be about three grams or, or more per day, you'd be looking at about, even at the wholesale price in China, about $30 per day. So it's something that's almost unusable by, by the fact that it's prohibitively expensive at the moment. Uh, and it's unlikely to go down in price. In fact, cordyceps has just continued to rise exponentially. Just a couple years ago, relatively high-grade cordyceps could be had for about $5,000 a kilo. And now even the lowest-grade stuff is over twice that price. And so it's become steadily more expensive and in steadily higher demand. But the natural, e the natural resources of the wild material are unable to meet this rise in demand, and it's becoming harder and harder to find. And there is an increasing problem of ecological damage as the people are going into progressively more remote regions to hunt for cordyceps. And so ultimately, a lot of the future in the therapeutic use of cordyceps tends to uh, be coming from the applications of cultivated cordyceps rather than wild cordyceps. One of the uh, vendors of wild cordyceps that I was talking to in China recently, I said, you know, is anybody still buying this stuff at $10,000 a kilo? And they said, the people, that, the people that buy it never eat it, the people that eat it never buy it. It's mostly something that's done as part of the, the uh, cultural fascination with giving quality gifts to people that you're friends with, that you work with in China. And so a lot of uh, wealthy Chinese people, as there's more and more disposable income in China, people are seeking out these highly prized expensive items like cordyceps. Oftentimes someone will be doing a business deal that's worth millions of dollars. They'll think nothing of giving somebody a thousand dollar box of cordyceps, but ultimately most of the people that are actually eating the cordyceps received it as gifts. Most of the people that are buying the cordyceps as gifts uh, find it too expensive to eat it themselves on it. Uh, so the main thing that people are using these days is cultivated cordyceps, and there's two major strains of cultivated cordyceps in use. The first one is called CS4, um, CS4 cordyceps sinensis. I think four is probably the the number that was given to it in their in their in their original sequence, but I'm not sure about the exact origin of the name CS4. But it's the most common trade name for the most commonly cultivated cordyceps variety. And <coughs> cultivated cordyceps as a whole tends to be very similar to natural cordyceps in terms of its constituents. Uh, its its growing environment is completely different. The cordyceps sinensis, the CS4 powder, is grown by a process called fermentation, whereas the, the other major cordyceps product on the market, cordyceps militaris, which I have here, is grown in glass jars, and it produces a fruiting body. Uh, the item that we have here is the fruiting body of cultivated cordyceps militaris, and it's grown in a glass jar. The portion above the growing medium is the fruiting body, and it forms these long finger-like tendrils. And it's basically graded based on its morphology. Longer, thicker, uh, larger, more attractive finger-like projections tend to fetch a higher price. But the most important aspect of its differentiation is based on its uh, fragrance and taste. And so different uh, producers produce cordyceps militaris of different quality. And generally speaking, the region in, in southern China around Guangzhou is thought to be slightly superior to the region in Beijing. That, that may be changing as more and more producers are starting to cultivate it. 
the cultivated cordyceps militaris is basically divided into multiple grades based on the morphology of the fruiting body, but two larger grades based on whether you're talking about the, the portion that's above the growing medium or the portion that's below the growing medium. The portion that's below the growing medium is the mycelium, and it's a, instead of having long finger-like projections, it's a, it's a bulbous, uh, irregular chunks, often a little bit uh, accompanied by more broken pieces, much less attractive morphology, about half the price. And so of the cordyceps varieties that form a fruiting body, it's pretty much all cultivated, uh, cultivated cordyceps militaris. And the cultivated cordyceps sinensis, it tends not to produce a fruiting body when it's cultivated on a commercial scale. So they, they raise it just to propagate the mycelium and they make a powdered extract, uh, a powder or a powdered extract of that. And so that's what you have here in a product like the empowered cordyceps. You have the combination of the extracts and the the powdered, uh, the powdered whole mycelium of the CS4 powder. To use uh, cultivated cordyceps, it's traditionally taken with duck or chicken soup, and so oftentimes people will take a little bit of the raw material and just put it in a in a batch of chicken soup or duck soup. Um, but another way that's very good to take it is to make an alcohol extract of it. If you just take it and you soak it in liquor. Uh, usually using vodka or something about 40% alcohol. It'll tend to give you a very nice color, a very good fragrance, and it extracts really quickly so that you can use the uh, you can use the product relatively rapidly if you're starting from the whole product. It can also be used in decoctions, but it has a little bit of a distinctive, uh, musty taste. The flavor is actually not unpleasant, but it tends to be more unique, so it can dominate decoction easily. So it's best usually to just boil it on its own, take it as a tea. Some people even add it to their breakfast, their oatmeal. Um, I like to take it and soak it as an alcohol extract and just take a little sake shot of the alcohol extract um, or to use it in a prepared form like a capsule or a ready-made extract. So that's just a little bit of a brief introduction to the situation with cordyceps. So uh, thanks for visiting our YouTube channel.